Tu Bishvat is mamish the strangest of all the Yom Tovim. It's hard to even know Lamaisa what we're celebrating. Rosh Hashanah is the Briyas Olam, Hashem created the world. Okay, that's something we could get our mind around. It's, it's the day of his Chachas, we can recreate ourselves. Tremendous Koyach. Pesach is Man Chayvaseinu. Mamish Nisim Venifel Ois. Esamakas and Chris Yamsaf and Hashem choosing Kla Yisrael. Shavuos is Mat and Torah. There was never such a thing as Mat and Torah in all of history. Purim and Chanukah, the biggest Yeshua's, the biggest salvations possible. And then there's Tu Bishvat. <laughs> if you look underground at the roots, it's very wet. And there's a little bit of sap and it's coming up and that creates Paris and, and, and sprouting and blossoms, but that'll still be a couple of months away. I appreciate the, the interesting botanical exploration. But it's an emesdika question. The Shem Ishmael asked this. What's the Yeshua for Klai Yisrael? What's the Gili of Shechina? What's, what's, what is the depth of this day? Rashi says, the classic Yeshua we know, that we're exactly a third of the way through the year and the majority of the rains have fallen and therefore the water is under the ground and the roots can bring them up and therefore the sap, the saraf is starting to come up the trees which means that the tree now has the potential to blossom even though it's one and a half, two months away. And I appreciate the botanical phenomena. But Mbamesh is the strangest volume to him. And every Yontif has a matana, a shefa. We can mamish go through of all our clippers, of all our manias, and the Briya Sa'ilam, we can create ourselves with this chachas, and uh, every yontif has it. So what is this one, eating fruit? Is it Sagula for eating fruit? The Shulchan Aruch says we don't say tachan on this day because there's mamish achias, there's mamish something coming through, the Magan Evraham, the Ben Ishchai, mamish say we have to eat fruit, not just Albi Kabbalah, but it's, it's an halacha. The Makumbalim, some say, B'Shem, the Ariyah Kadasha, even say, Ad Kach, that when we eat fruit on this day, we're metakin, we fix the Chet of Adam Arishan. No less. So this day, which doesn't even make sense in a Jewish calendar, fixes the greatest and the greatest, most destructive force that all of reality, all of history, all of the most Sabrachan kite problems in our lives was caused by. By eating fruit. We want to understand this. Our intention together is I don't like giving Torah in the middle of a Seder. I like to fly with you all in the middle of the Seder to meditate, to have intentions. So we're going to give the Torah before the Seder. And then you know your intentions and you know what we're doing here and we'll help you speak that out and give clarity to that. And then we'll ride together for an hour with the help of the holy minstrels behind us. So here's a little understanding, a little intention, a little depth here. To understand the secret of Tu Bishvat is Mamish, I don't know if you call it a coincidence, Gematria, Havaya, just don't add it up. Um, I Mamish feel, I mean, Koching sitting on this Torah for weeks now. There's no better way to understand what Tu Bishvat's about than looking at what happened to Klai Yisrael from October 7th. And if, like all of us, you're sitting there going, Admetai Hashem, why is this happening? What do you want from us? What is this about? Why are we being hit and then hit again and hit again? And why is the whole world turning against us? I honestly feel, not just as a touch, but emes la mitoy, that if you understand the secret of Tuvishvat, you'll understand what's happening in the world. And I hate when rabbis say, I'll tell you what's happening, but I'm going to tell you what's happening. <laughs> I may be wrong but I think I'm onto something, and we can meditate and explore it together. I checked in, as I always do, Rabbi Sun, what do you think it is? It's like, yeah, and I wrote a 15-page document about this six years ago. Here's an Hebrew, here's the translation, I printed it out. <laughs> I'm slow, but I get there in the end, don't I? <laughs> it's an ongoing joke. I thought of something no one's thought of. I published a book on that 20 years ago in my computer. Didn't he didn't publish a book. Huh? Okay, so let's get to work on that, shall we? <laughs> so it goes like this, my holy chiva. Are we going to accomplish our mission this war or not? Are we going to knock out the leaders of Hamas? Yes. 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 This is not a democracy. We're not taking a vote. I mean, 
<laughs> These are questions of our heart. Are the hostages going to come back? If we could win the war and lose the hostages, we don't have to make these decisions. Someone has to, and I'm hoping it's a sham. Is there going to be a war up north? For all intents and purposes, according to the news, it would be much worse than what happened down south. There's a huge rise, unprecedented in history, of global anti-Semitism. In my life, not since the Holocaust, in my own generation, I've never seen something as dark and tragic and uncertain. And what I hear people saying to me all the time is, even if we win this war, and even if we don't lose the war, how as Jews living around the world can we ever go back to normal? How can we go back to college? How can we walk down the streets seeing all these people that hate us? Seeing the leaders of organizations, of Ivy League colleges, seeing that, hey, yeah, they can fire someone, and then the same team puts the next person back in. There has something that has a rupture that's being created right now. And we never know what Hashem's doing, because Hashem's machshava is greater than ours. And we can ask, why, why, all we want? And the answer is we never know. But Hashem wants to give us a direction. I believe with all my heart, Hashem wants us to, to have a direction. And I think when you hear what we're going to say and what the Ramchal teaches, you're going to say, this is direction that, that we're still in the pain and darkness, but we can see where the darkness is taking us. When COVID hit, I heard people saying, wow, the whole world is closing down and everything's falling apart. Is this Mashiach? And people are going, Mashiach now, Mashiach now. I certainly don't claim to be a Navi, but I knew with all my heart it wasn't time for Mashiach. I got some people upset, apparently. I said, I don't think he's going to come. Who are you to say Mashiach's not going to come? Okay, Halavai, he will come. I want to explain to you why I don't think Mashiach was going to come for COVID and why I don't think Mashiach is going to come now. But this is a good news story. We respond as, as Klaus, we have a mitzvah to every day expect the coming of Mashiach. So therefore, when we see calamity, we see something that looks like the world ending or Kali Yisrael, out, Kali Yisrael at risk, we all say, is this time for Mashiach? But the reason I thought at the time of COVID and the reason I think of the time today, and again, this is not chas I want to be wrong, let Mashiach come and let me be wrong. But I think there's something, a schmack happening and I want us to attune ourselves to it. We're not ready for Mashiach. And Hashem wants us to be ready for Mashiach. I know there's a machlokas with an incredible tzaddik about this. And besides that tzaddik shita, Pedera Klal, all the other makubalim hold this to be true. Do you want Hashem to bring Mashiach? Because he can crash the system and bring Mashiach. And then four-fifths of the Jews will not be ready and not make it. And it will be brutal because our hearts aren't open, our souls aren't ready. We haven't owned the light that we can own. We haven't taken responsibility yet for our own stuff. Alternatively, Hashem has a gift to us. Hashem wants us to awaken in ourselves. He wants us to own it themselves. Any time Hashem could bring the Sheikh now, he could have also brought Mashiach 4,000 years ago. Now, we would have said, that sounds good, but we weren't ready. When you get the blessing before you are ready, it doesn't always turn out to be a blessing. Hashem wants Mashiach more than we want Mashiach, more than Chabad wants Mashiach, if you feel. <laughs> but timing is the essence. Because Hashem wants us to have earned the light, owned the light, acquired the light, and therefore be masters of the light for all eternity. And I know there's controversy here, that's not tonight, but I just want to break this down for you. So besides the idea that halavai there would be Mashiach now, and halavai there'd be Tachias Mesim now, and those 24 would be lost for two days, and then it'd be back up tomorrow, halavai that would be true, and I promise I'm first in line that wants to be wrong. Our sages, and many of the greatest Sadiqan in history, say it's not, it will not result in pitam. Yes, we have to believe that it could be pitam, but actually there's a process. It actually evolves in stages. And those stages have very specific signs and a very specific unfolding that you can look out for. 
Now everyone from the Zohar to the Vilna Gaon for sure, to the Baal Shem Tov, to the Ramchal who'll talk about tonight, they map out the stages, they talk about them in depth. And for some people they say, well, that's not what we want, we want Mashiach now. But I think if you understand the depth of it, you'll appreciate where we're up to in that process. And I think what the Ramchal is telling us, it's really clear to see we are on the map to something we've never been before. And I think the secret of the Ramchal's understanding of where we're on the process is literally the secret of Tubishvat. Let's begin here. The Ramchal says the Geula happens, not Pitam, but in two different phases. Shnezmanim, two different stages. There's many stages along the way, but there's two. Now we think about the times of Mashiach. The Mashiach will rise out, a great leader will come, and there'll be kibbutz Goliath, and we'll all come back to Yerushalayim, and there'll be no more Shibbat Malchias. We won't be serving the other nations of the world. We'll find our own light, our own strength, our own identity, our own mission. We'll unite together. We'll build the Beit HaMikdash. The Nevi'im, the prophets, will arise. We will all become Nevi'im. And Ramchal says, we're all going to see the Makava. We will eradicate evil in the world. It will be eradicated all automatically by the elevation of all of human consciousness. Malachat's Deir Hashem. But he says all of that is actually the second stage. And now a word from our sponsor. <laughs> he says all of that is the second stage. And he says before that, and I never heard this before I heard this, but I felt this with all my heart. There's a first stage. And he says, this is discussed and hinted to in Tanakh, in the Sifrei Kabbalah, in many places. I'm going to keep it simple tonight, because we have somewhere deeper to go. So I want to explain to you how it works and how he breaks it down. This is from a sefer called Maimah HaGaula. I highly recommend you pick it up. I'm happy to teach it. Rabbi Son, maybe we'll teach it. We should, we should go into the safe. It's Moedic. It's beautiful. It opened my eyes and heart in a very deep way. I want to explain to you what... I want to explain to you what these two levels are. And I can explain to you it like the Baal Shem Tov is in the marshal of, of a human being, B'nai Adam, of you and me, M'besare Echzei Alakai, the, 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 the history, his story of, of Klal Yisrael is one collective human being, one collective consciousness. One person moving through a pro process, moving through stages. So we can understand how it's going to end. The transformation of Klal Yisrael or Am Yisrael, the elevation of the consciousness, the healing, the eradication of all evil, the transformation of human history, the, the ultimate peak and spitz. By understanding our inner transformation and our inner struggles and our inner trauma, you know, I don't know if you know, I'm an elevation project, we run retreats around the world and every day we're dealing with people, lots of people going through breakthrough experiences and transforming their lives, but it also follows a pattern that some people think is counterintuitive, but when you get this pattern you realize, of course. And this is, this is the principle in all the Hasidus of Kabbalah. A person begins in light. We are not born into sin. We are born into light. We have a divine, infinite soul of wisdom and clarity, of strength and purpose. The most depressing thing as a rabbi is when someone comes to you and says, I don't know my purpose in life, a 40-year-old man, a 50-year-old woman. Some people think the, the meaning of life is to find the meaning of life. And then you'll go up to the cliff and there's the yogi and you're 90 years old and you say, what is the meaning of life? And he says, find a yogi. And you go, mazel tov, and you collapse. Zeo. Toro says you should know what your meaning is, know what your tafkit is, know what your purpose. And the purpose of your life is to then manifest that destiny. You are the roots. You have to become the Paris. But what happens is we disconnect from our light maybe in this lifetime, maybe many times, we fall from our light. We forget ourselves. we forget our nature, we forget our purpose. We crumble and collapse and become fractured. Different desires within us pull against ourselves. Suddenly we no longer see ourselves in our true nature. We start comparing ourselves to everybody else around us, healthy, unhealthy, psychotic, genocidal. And we lose our nature, we lose ourself, we become fragmented. And then of course, when we don't have our light and our clarity and our strength and our wisdom and our protection and our guidance and our willpower to overcome odds, we become weak and fragile. We become vulnerable Then all the sources in the world, all the clippers, the Kali, come and attack us, fragment us, divide us, and we are defeated. Anyone that's gone through intense trauma in your life, this is what you see in their life when you witness them. 
So of course they come to you and say, well, how do I get away from that abusive person? Why don't you get divorced? Oh, I've been married for 40 years. I don't know if it's going to be any better. What if I'm alone? What if I can't find anyone else? And there's so many people, including Amisul right now, that are so divided, they're so fragmented, they don't even remember. Hasta Asta Panay, Rabbi Nachman says, it's not that you just can't access your true self. You don't even realize that you've disconnected from your true self. You don't even know that you have a higher self, a deeper power, a greater light to reconnect to. Do you hear me so far? Yes. When we lose our light and our connection to our mission and purpose and we collapse, we are vulnerable to all the darkness in the world. So how do we get a person out of that situation? People think that you have to change the world, change the relationships, change your degree, get a new job, get a new iPhone, whatever it is. You are a, vo a voter zoa of choice. Yeah, we're waiting for a little lasagna. He ordered a cappuccino too, I think. I want to tell you how true change happens. When you're in a destructive relationship and you want the destructive person to go away but you don't want to change yourself, you end up in another destructive relationship. We're in a dead-end job and you want more money because then you'll be happy and you move to another dead-end job with more money. True change has to come from the inside first. First you reconstruct your soul, first you find your essence, first you find your light, first you rebuild your confidence, first you unify your energy. You know, when we do these retreats around the world, it's always the same Indian that, I'm not meaning to speak bad or negative about anything, but sometimes in the Torah world, it's first finish Shas, then keep all the Chumras in all of the world, then make your black hat as wide and high as possible, and then you may find your light and your purpose. But the Baal Shem Tov said, start with divine connection. Start with the Vekas. Don't make a person become religious. First give them their heart. First give them their soul. First give them the light. It's amazing how powerful, illuminated they become and that they get to create their own destiny. First you rebuild the light inside because what happened, first you lost the connection. That's why the darkness came about. Don't fix the darkness externally. First reconnect to source. When you've reconnected to source, then everything will be transformed and realigned. Do you understand what we're saying so far? Listen to what the Ramchal teaches is something unbelievable. Bef when Mashiach comes, there's two stages. We can't transform the world. We can't overcome our enemies. If we kill all of Hamas, the next one will come in stronger. They always have, they always will. Hashem is calling on us to awaken internally first, to remember who we are first, to reconnect to our source and mission first, to not be fragmented and divided, Dati Lumi and Haredi and Hasidic and Chilani. It's not Yom Kippur and Tel Aviv. We have to do better than that. He wants us to remember a united voice, a united purpose, united energy come together. When that light goes on, when we reconnect to self and source, then there's no darkness we can't overcome. Because the motto was first internal disconnection results in external destruction, the only path to heal that is reconnect internally first, then we can transform the world together. Do you hear it? Listen to how the Ramchal breaks this down. There's two stages. The first is called Pekida, Pekida. The second is called Zechira, Zechira. He says, as Chazal teaches, the way the Jews left Mitzrayim is the same way that Klai Yisrael today will go to the final redemption of Mashiach and their elevation of all reality. It's the same model playing out again. So we look at the model. He says, look at the Lashon of the Pasuk. Look at what happened to Mitzrayim. He says, it's very simple if you pay attention to it. In the darkest, most terrible time in Mitzrayim, with the sighing and moaning raised up all the way to Shemayim, all the way to heaven in the worst possible way. Suddenly, Moshe Rabbeinu, he himself is exiled from, from his place of being. And there's a burning bush, and Hashem says to him, Lech vasafta as zikne Yisrael, go and gather together the elders of Yisrael, vamata lehem, Hashem elakaya vaseichem near alai. Hashem, the, the God, the light of your forefathers has appeared to me. Elkei Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Leimah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov, to say, Pakoid Pekadati Eschem. 
I have taken note of you, Jewish people. I see you. I am aware of you. The first stage is pakida, pakad pakadati, an awareness, an attention. Pakida means to note, to remember, to recall, to be aware, to be conscious of. Hashem became aware of us. Hashem saw them when he didn't see them for the last 200 years. Put his attention on them. Das is his chabras. Suddenly we felt, even in Mitzrayim, a light, a power that maybe we're not abandoned. Maybe there's something good coming, even as we're schlepping these stones up the pyramids. There's an awareness that begins in the consciousness of the enslaved, which as it builds, as it rises up within us, is the beginning of Geula, even though on the outside, the world is still falling down. Do you see where we're going with this? Listen to me. The first stage is Pekida the internal awakening as the world is in darkness. The second stage is Zechira. Then Hashem truly remembers us in force. Zechira is from Lashen Zachar. He takes the world in its fallen feminine state and raises it back up to its original memory of its Zachar potential and initial masculine light and vision. He lights the moon with the sun. It's a full moon tonight. It's open to expanding to receive the vision. Kumi Uri Kivo Orech, Nishaya, Ramchal says, Zman Hapakida, Kumi Uri Kivo Orech, rise up, rise up, stand up and shine. Your light is coming. It's not here. It's here, but you have to rise up into it. You're down, you're on the floor. Internally, rise up. And the second stage, whose man has a chira, Kavoid Hashem Alayach Zerach. Now Hashem's light will shine into you and the whole world will be transformed. First, the internal awakening, the internal transformation. And then we transform the world. Hit nari me'afa kumi. The Mamchal brings all these pesukim and many more. Rise up, shake yourself off from the dust. Kumi, rise up. What is this time? What's he doing to tell us to rise up? Here are the properties of Pekita. I'm going to go through this very fast. See if it rings a bell. In a time of tremendous challenge and darkness, where tremendous forces will come upon us. Ramachal says this 300 plus years ago. 300 years ago? We are sunk in the dust. The dark re dust represents the clippers. Kim a shechina mina afa. The shechina, collective consciousness of our people. It needs to rise up from the dirt. Nefalti kamti, yes, I fell, but I will rise. How does that rising going amidst yagoin vitsara, suffering and pain and agony that's unfathomable, unfathomable? This is what he says. Hashem suddenly removes the blocks on our consciousness to reveal the hidden light of all of Am Yisrael. Ha'ara eloki, koyach va'or ha'chokma. There's a light of the highest world called chokma, of pure light and revelation. And as we're sitting there being smashed and beaten to pieces, suddenly a light goes on collectively in the Jewish people. Oh, we are Am Yisrael. Oh, these are my people. Religious, secularly collapse. In Israel, chutz la'aretz collapse. Suddenly we are one, we're connected. I love, I want to be a part of this. I want to not flee Israel. I want to get on a plane and come to Israel. And I want to be united with this. Your people are my people. We're all one together. Or a gedoyle of a great and powerful light, suddenly comes to the neshamas. Listen to what he says about this. And then awakens a desire that they should all want to, the shuv el Hashem. They all want to return to Hashem, connect to Hashem in their own sweet way. Hashem could not have just appeared to them. This is the secret that Ramchal says. He has to first awaken their will to connect. You cannot have, I'm not going to say what the word is in life, but it's something Hamas know a lot about. A connection can't be forced upon another. A true connection of love has to be two desiring each other. Hashem wants us to want the re revelation of Hashem. He wants us to want Mashiach. Mashiach is not a man only. Mashiach is the highest desire of unity between Hashem and us manifest and revealed. That's the ultimate Paris. Hashem couldn't have just appeared. He has to first awaken us. Kamti anil. 
He quotes all these pesukim, beautiful pesukim, shir shirim, etc. Hashem says, there's a time when I will rise up and open the door of, on the heart of my beloved. It's interesting, isn't it? And this is where he stresses the point. This removal of Hest upon him is only lifnei v'lifnim. It's only lifnei v'lifnim. Do you know what that means? If you look around the world, it will all be burning. It will all be the middle of winter. It will all be completely dark, abuse. All the nations of the world will continue their aggression against us. And according to them, it's only getting worse for you. We're all rising up. But all of us, where is the light coming in? It's only awakening in our hearts. It's something we're beginning to sense. It's something we sense a unity, we sense an actress. And according to the world, you're all going down. And according to us, something's rising up. Does it feel familiar to you? Ah. Even though she's still in the dust, she's starting to take back a Malchus. Bekida says the Ramchal is metak in the Kilkal of Ishan. If Shem wants to rebuild us, he's not going to start by strong Israeli politics, high tech in Tel Aviv. It's not going to start by. I salute every single one of these absolute heroes, these social media warriors are defending us in the world. Hashem should bless and protect every single one of us, every single one of them. But the war will not be won by the most geniuses of social media. The haters are going to hate. And I encourage them to do their work and get stronger and stronger. It's amazing stuff. Hashem is waiting for us. The kill call of Ishan is we lost our light. So the beginning into the end is, spoiler alert, we have to find our light. Hashem doesn't want the ge'ula from above. He wants the ge'ula from below. And therefore, listen to this. Once we get the light, then the war will begin to transform the world to express what we've remembered within us. We have to be mindful. We have to be aware of the shekhinah, of this light that is rising up. I have not seen, I've spoken about this in my classes for the last few months, in my life, technically one of the things I do with my days, I hate this word, is outreach. And we're all clearly clever about outreach and who's our target demographic and where is our funding and which organization you're aligned with and who you're certainly not aligned with. But nobody does Kira better than Hashem. <laughs> One terrible event I've never seen in my life. Students, friends, strangers on social media hearing story after story. Rabbi, I got in a car. I haven't kept kosher all my life since I was 10 years old. I drove 45 minutes to the close, she's in the middle of America, to the closest kosher restaurant I could find. I just wanted to show them that I can eat kosher. So, you know, these kids on campus that literally said, I don't know what to fill in are, but I wanted to do something Jewish. How many stories have you heard? Amazing stories. There's this wonderful woman in Australia that accidentally called out in a class to come up and scream. I told her she should come to Israel. She said, I've never, I haven't, just like I'm yearning, my soul's coming. She started crying, I want to come to Israel. She's working to get, she hasn't yet. Two days ago, I spoke to some woman I've never met before, a student. She said, thank you so much, Israel was amazing. I said, what do you mean, thank you so much? She said, when you called that lady out of the crowd and the thing, I was watching and I got on a plane, went straight to Israel. I've never, I've never. How many stories? All the planes are supposed to be empty, everyone evacuating, everyone's coming on planes, all these missions and people giving helmets and lights and lanterns and but everyone wants to give. Yes, we understand there's some of the souls that don't, that are not aligning with this, but people I never imagined. I think there's a little thing in the media. We all want to show how the world hates us. By the way, the people that hate us are a very small demographic. I'm amazed, actually, in truth, how many people are aligning. There's an awakening that's happening within. You hear it? Listen to this beautiful pasik. This is the vampire says, I am asleep. I am in the dust. We are being smashed to pieces externally. But suddenly my heart goes on. Who woke up my heart? called doidi doifek piskali. The voice of my beloved is knocking, doifek, knocking on the door of your heart, let me in. Doifek is the same letters as pekida. Wow. The awakening of the light within, says the Ramcha. Fine, you hear where we're going with this? It's the awakening that begins the process, and now here's the scary part, are you ready? Can someone please get a chair for my wife standing at the door? Sorry to interrupt. Thanks. This is the next thing you have to know, and it's a little scary. The Vamkal gives a warning. 
He says, Pekida is a door of Chachma, a light that opens. He says it closes too. It's a temporary light. I've already noticed myself in the last few weeks it's starting to close. You've already seen the news, the left and the right are starting up again with their usual shtuyot. You already see even good people, strong people, like maybe we are healing too many people. You see the doubts come in. He warns it's going to close. It will go dark again. But he says, he says, if you doubt it, by the way, if you doubt it wasn't Bikida, he says, don't, don't doubt it. The light coming on and going off is, is the path of Bikida. Because he says, the light first goes on the neshama. But now the neshama has to metak in the guf. The internal has to metak in the external. So now you need, with the awakening happening, the world to really go to us. So now we stand up and we become the giver. We become the hero. It's not just those heroic soldiers that are fighting in Gaza. Shem wants every single one of us to be soldiers for Kedusha. Every single one of us to be soldiers for the Shekhinah. So now... We're going to lose that a little, and now the world is going to get darker, and now we're going to learn to fight ourselves. And he says, by the way, that awakening in our heart catalyzes the light to awaken Mashiach. He says, the Pasik, Pakad Pakadati Eschem. Hashem remembers that. And, and a couple of Pesukim later says, Amosha Hayaro Eas son. And Moshe began to be Royed's son, to be a shepherd. Once we begin to find that light, suddenly there's an incredible tzaddik somewhere in the world that a light goes on with him, and he says, I'm going to be a shepherd of the sun. Is the sun we all are. So our light empowers our leader. Now listen to this. Do you see the connection to Tu Bishvat? So listen to this. The Shem Yishmael says it so beautifully. The rain has fallen all year, but we don't see the Paris. We don't see the light coming from it. It's a third of the way into the year. And it begins to reveal its effect. Now listen to this. The seraph begins to rise. So it can start to show blossoms. It can start to show fruit. So listen to this. Ki Adam et Sada. We are the tree. And the rain is Shefa Eliki. That even in the darkness of the world, the chef, the light is coming into us. It's coming into this. The first third of the year. In Kabbalah, the human body is broken down into three thirds. The shlish ha'elion is from our consciousness to the heart. It takes a first year for quietly the shefa and light to start to fill our heart. And on this day, the water, the shefa elaki, comes into our heart that we can begin to feel the light in a tangible way, even in the midst of darkness, even in the midst of, of near Holocaust proportions. Suddenly, the light starts to come into our heart. It has her oivus elakis. And suddenly there's an awakening that we want to do mitzvahs, we want to connect, we want to dampen for Kali Yisrael. On an unprecedented way, we did these online sessions in the last few months. Thousands of people attended. Our marketing didn't get so much better. There, there's, a, there's a chuka, there's a yearning that suddenly awoke. And from that desire that's awakening our hearts, now we can move towards the blossoming. Now we can move towards the fruits. Now that's going to drive us to really collapsing our life. This isn't like COVID where nothing internally was awakened. The world was collapsing. This is the darkness where on the inside it awakens. And now this is, if we use this moment well, we catalyze and we lean into Mashiach. Now is the time that we can do it. This is the cool part now. So what's the vision of Tu Bishvat? Purim is the entire Jewish people were saved. Hanukkah is the better Migdash and the Jewish people were saved. Sukkot is we left Bitzrayim and we're protected in divine light. Yom Kippur, all our sins are forgiven. Tu Bishvat, the sap comes up from below. When you think about this, we would think that the only thing worth celebrating is incredible salvations. The only thing worth celebrating is unbelievable revealed miracles, unbelievable hidden miracles that save the Jewish people, the giving of the Torah. But at this point in history, none of those give us strength because we are in the dust. We are challenged, we're in pain, we're suffering. This is a genius of Hashem and a genius of Torah. Tu Bishvat is the festival when everything is collapsed. There's no good happening. There's nothing to see. There is something there, but you have to go deep to find it. Even Tisha B'Av is we have to mourn for what we've lost. There's no mourning. There's no temple rebuilt. We're still in the darkness no matter what we do. 
I want to tell you something amazing that occurred to me. October 7th was the, was the Tubishvat of the Jewish people. October 7th was the day when I've never seen such darkness and a light got turned on at the same time. October 7th was devastation on the outside, profound awakening on the inside that would change the future of the Jewish people. But on the outside, everything is burning down. Do you see that? So what's... The burning bush was burning and it was not consumed. And I'll say more about it. That's October 7th. Coming soon to a Tisha B'Av Seder, to be sure Seder near you. So I'm going to finish up here and then Rabbi San is going to say a few words. Tu Bishvat is, is the Jewish festival where we get the power that when everything is burning down in complete darkness with no life and hope, there's nothing to celebrate, there's no salvations, there's no miracles. We close our eyes and we tune within. This is what the Shem Shmuel says. He says, even a person that is not spiritually sensitive that can usually feel this stuff, on Tu Bishvat, if they close their eyes, they go to Yeshiva Das, you begin to feel something rising within you. That's the light within you, that's the light of the Shrina but you can't see that with your eyes. Do you understand? You can only see the life force, the chiyas, the ha'araki rise through the eyes of Amuna. To be shvat strengthens our Amuna. Amuna means that when I look at the world and it's burning down and it's dark and it's barren and it's a wasteland, why wouldn't I mourn? Why wouldn't I be devastated? Why wouldn't I collapse? Do you understand this is why we eat fruit? Eating fruit and to be shvat is, is a cruel kind of irony. It's the day when there is no fruit, where visually it's the darkest time of winter, where there's no sign of redemption, and we're gonna lean into redemption so much that we're gonna have the taste in our mouth and the experience in our heart like we are in redemption. The root represents the divine potential. The roots underground are flooded with water. Yeah, but the tree is rotting and dead. But imagine the tree miraculously came alive. Imagine it was full of greenery. Imagine that the plants blossomed. Imagine the fruit revolved. Imagine this was full of life and revelation and nivsifasaya of prophecy and the greatest potential, your greatest light being revealed in the world. But I don't see that at all. That's exactly why we're going to do it on Tubishvat. We're going to celebrate the future like it's happening in the present, though what's happening in the present is the ultimate devastation. And when we do that, when we have faith in the miraculous outcome, even though we're being shattered to pieces, there's a miracle of Amuna that the Hasidic masses call Amuna is Moshech. Amuna is not a passive response to mechazek yourself when things go wrong, just to survive them and get through them. Amuna is a creative act. What you believe in your heart, you manifest in reality. Sounds like the law of attraction. This is what the Siddiquim called the Koyach Moshech. What you believe in, you draw into reality. Tracht gut wird sein gut. If you believe the salvation can come through the belief, you manifest that into reality. You understand the word Amuna? The Rosharash of the word Amuna comes to the root Amen. Amen is numerical value 91. 91 is numerical value Elan tree. What does a tree do? It takes the deep potential underground and it creates a, 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 a process to draw the potential to reality. It draws hidden potential into manifest in reality. Ilan is 91. 91 is the show of the word Amuna, Amen, Amuna. What Amuna does is draw potential into reality. When you believe in your child, trust me, I know this, who's falling apart, there's got so much problems, and the Rebbe's and the Rebbe's all complain, blah, you believe in your child, your belief gives them the belief in themselves to turn into that Sadik, to turn into that Mensch, to turn into that Sadekus. What you believe in, you draw out into reality. Therefore, the word for tree is the numerical value of Amuna because the tree draws the potential in reality. We all know the famous gematria as well. Shem Havaya, Shem Adnas. Shem Havaya is the infinite potential. Shem Adnas is the Adonai is revealing and manifesting the infinite light into reality to draw it out. Havaya and Adnas is gematria 91. It's the same as a tree. So the secret of Tubishvat, the secret of what we're doing here today
is it's the one festival that we have where there's no salvation yet, where every reason to believe we're destroyed and we're helpless and this kid can't be saved and this person's trauma is going to overwhelm them too much and this person's marriage is so shattered, there's no hope. Stop. Even in that time, go in, go deep. There's something rising and you have to decide. We all have a choice. Are we going to lean into the despair of this time? Or are we going to lean, lead into the hope in the future? Are we going to say we're surrounded by so many anti-Semites, the world is hopeless? Or are we going to say we're going to rise above this and transform the destiny of humanity? And on this day, if you believe with the eyes of Amuna that the hope of the Jewish people and Klai Israel and Eretz Israel is much greater than the darkness we see in the news, then we're going to eat the fruit. We're going to embody the taste and the bliss and the pleasure. And at this day, when the sap starts to rise, Sof on the day when the potential is coming in, where we want to cry and collapse because of the 21, 24 heroes, it's too much, it's overwhelming. We can collapse into that. Hashem understands us. Any therapist knows, give the person the time to mourn. Let them be overwhelmed. If you say, I'm overwhelmed and I'm giving up and I'm hopeless, we all hear, we understand it. But the prompt and the calling of this day is if you close out the external world, Jews have to look at the world through the eyes of Amunah. Don't look at the dead tree. Attune your intuitive mind. Under Underneath the ground, in the roots of every single one of theirs, there's a light rising up, even now, dafke even now. That's too bishvat. And if we say, well, what's it going to be? It's going to be fruit and luxury and bliss and pleasure and unity and blessing. Are you kidding me? It's completely dark outside. Taste this fruit. Remember the future. Amuna means through remembering the future, we manifest the future in the present. I don't have time to go into this. We're already so late, but this is the secret. Through eating fruit on Tu Bishvat, we met in the Etzadas Tevara because Hashem really wanted that the tree, the tree itself would taste as good as the fruit. And then man ate from the external and we disconnected from the Etz Chaim and all of reality collapsed and I have lots of great Torahs on this, but right now in one sense is this is what it all means. Someone's beeping. This is what it all means. Suffering challenge that we go through, lefum sal aga, ultimately gets us to redemption and line of blessing. We all know that we're mature adults. But in the middle of the suffering right now, it's just too much to bear. But one day maybe we'll be olam haba Jews. Olam haba Jews, everything, pardon my French, sucks now. But one day, things will be good. Torah and mitzvahs, it's pretty miserable now, but one day. But Amuna is what connects heaven and earth, Havaya and Andus. Amuna is what connects, this is how it works. When you sit in the darkness, but you stare and taste the bliss of the light, are you in the darkness? When you're in the midst of the process where everything is so hard and you're struggling to get to the end, but maybe, uh, the Baal Shem Tov says, but you could have your world to come in this world already. If you close your eyes and go into the vacas and th see that sap coming up, that light coming in and the bliss, if you're struggling through something so dark, but you start to have a vision, start to imagine the blessing that comes from it, then there is no process because your consciousness is already in the goal. There is no Eitzadas Tovara because you're already getting chiyas and energy and bl blessing and chachma from the Eitz Chaim. You collapse the separation between external and internal. You're living the spiritual awareness even amidst the darkness. <laughs> Amuna, which is today eating fruit. There's no fruit on the trees. Yeah, but I can taste it and it's so good. There's no hope in our situation. I know, but we're already dancing the better Mikdash. The challenge of Tubishvat has never been more applicable to our people. Can you think about the hostages? Can you think about the anti semites riding on the street? Can you think about the chaos in Israeli politics? And there's probably no leadership to get us out right now. Not enough unity to do it. Can you think about all the challenges and pain and suffering, the families that have lost their kindalach, the families that don't know where their kindalach are right now? And can we get up and dance amidst that? Because we so believe with all our hearts, the light coming on, the light is riding, the Pekida, this is Hashem knocking and say, if you wake up, if you walk to Hashem, I'll run to you. The tasting of the fruit, the experiencing of the light, when all help seems lost, is the ultimate 
heroic act of faith, the definition of our people. And when we do that, it is a creative act. And we draw that to us. We draw Zechira through Pekida. We collapse the Etzadas Tovara into the Etz Chaim. We're already dancing the Bet Migdash with such joy in our hearts. That's much better for every hostage out there than us crying for them right now. As us lifting them up to a better place. And through that, we lift ourselves and the world up to a better place. And we turn Nachash, the forces of darkness, as we know, Nachash is Gematri Mashiach. We turn the darkness itself into the revelation. To be shvat, in London, this exact line gives us a question. Do you want to lean into the darkness because you have every right to? It's overwhelming. Look at the tree. Look at it's dead. There's no leaves. There's no life. But if we tune to the eyes of Amuna, look into the hidden world, there is a light rising. There is a blessing coming. And when you get that, then you close your eyes and you eat the fruit. And you say, bring the fruit on. Bring the end on. This is the one festival where nothing interesting and only darkness happens. Because God knows we live a life where sometimes that happens as well. And Hashem's saying, look with the eyes of a moon of what will be. Lean into that. And you'll be amazed what food and blessing is to come. Mm-hmm.